Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? <laughs> All right, Marls, we have our vittles. Yeah. And we have our water. Yeah. We have our backup GPS device in case the one that I'm currently using to film this fails. Yeah. And we have our headphones, useful for drowning out the sounds of nature when the sounds of nature... Well, why would you want to do that? I don't know, but I got headphones. Yeah. And last I see on our list, adventure. Hmm. No adventure here, Sir Marles. It's because the real adventure... Well, the real adventure's out there. You can't put the adventure in a bag, boy. You gotta go, and you gotta find the adventure. And that's what I'm doing today. So adventure... Tentative. We may not even find it. Hopefully, we will. Alright, so I am all set. I got my, my survival kit packed and um, my hiking boot and calf link sock combo make me feel like a paleontologist circa 1992's Jurassic Park, but I think the calf link socks will provide me maximum comfortability, I like to call it, for my feet while I'm walking. And also, the length will protect my legs from any briars or anything like that. Uh, the elements, possibly. I have sensitive calves. I should be good there. I'm all set. Gonna load this pack up, get in the car, and headed to Black Rock Mountain. Awesome. I'm on the road to adventure! <laughs> I just passed a billboard that said GOATS <laughs> in all caps. I don't know man, WTF. It looks like I'm driving up to the freaking Misty Mountains. <laughs> the Hobbit! <laughs> Wish me luck. The dragon's blowing smoke today, baby! Smokes at the top the Misty Mountain. <laughs> So, I've arrived here at Black Rock Mountain. The drive up was so awesome. It's a little rainy. Like, I'm actually in the rain cloud because when I was driving, you could see it, right? Well, I'm in it now. And I came to the first overlook here. And as you can see, clouds. I feel like I'm in the Congo. <laughs> Is that a gray gorilla? Jeremy, good gorilla. Jeremy, good gorilla. <laughs> and I love it because there's nobody here. I didn't pass any cars on the way. So, I'm pretty excited that... It's just me here on this lonely, lonely mountain. I feel like Bear grills. I'm so excited. I'm about to go. You gotta pay five bucks to get in. I'm gonna do that. What's out there? I'm probably gonna get bit by a snake today and die. I passed the sign when I came up. It was like Black Rock Mountain. World, or not world's highest mountain. What? <laughs> so I think I said Georgia's highest state park or highest mountain. Something like that. I think it was highest state park, uh, which is awesome. I'm so giddy right now. All right, I'll be back. So again, still more driving. I'm I'm driving the mountain. I'm not climbing it, but I'm at this next little thing. I had to stop. It's a Blue Ridge Overlook, and the elevation is about 200 feet higher. So there's like this little bridge thing. I don't know. Let's see what's going on here. I don't think this is where Smaug is. If he were, well, I'd I'd be here too with him. If you can see, you can't see. I'm blowing steam out. Oh look, they have a chair or two for S Smaug and his wife, or for me. Here I am on this overlook, again. Beautiful, Congo-ified Congo overlook. Oh, well, my car looks mysterious down there now. I passed two trails on the way here, but there's a sign that was like, oh, you need a, a parking pass. I don't know, I haven't passed a soul yet, so I don't know where I get this pass from. Who's gonna charge me? Are there monkeys with park ranger hats on? Is Yogi Bear out there? No. I think I'll be fine, but I'm gonna find a person so I can pay them five bucks so they don't tow my car or let the bears eat it. I don't know how that works out here. Okay, so I'm at the visitor center. I made it to the top, I think, which I was hoping to walk to the top, but driving here was cool too. 
You can't see anything. It's like a sea of, of, of clouds. I feel like, you know in cartoons where you can just like, you can walk on the clouds? Okay, here's like lava rock. <laughs> I'm on top of this thing and you can't see nothing. It's pea soup. And this is really awesome. There's a, uh, a big old cliff there. I can go tumbling right over. The video doesn't do it justice. The world is so big and I am so small. <laughs> There's those bears again. Last time it was bears eating pizza, and this time it's bears that clean up the environment. <laughs> Interesting. Black bears. The worst kind of bear. Okay, now don't get mad, nature, but I didn't know that don't move firewood was a thing. Either way, I got these rad tattoos. <laughs> so as a warm-up, start the day, we got the Ada High Falls Trail, 0.25 miles. Apparently, um, it's supposed to take an hour. Yeah, whatever. Oh, it's more difficult as opposed to walking a dog. I don't know what this means. Into the jungle I go. Wish me luck. Oh, look, a bench. For the pansies who couldn't hack the first 20 steps down the trail. <laughs> so quick story time while I'm on the trail here. I stopped by the uh, whatever it's called, the, the penthouse, the outhouse, the trailer house. What what's the the ranger house? I don't know. Wherever there's like they have like souvenirs and stuff, and you get your maps. I don't know what you call the place. There might have been a sign. So I pull up and there's a car parked in front of it. It's just some little sedan with with a heartogram sticker on the window. And I was like, okay, who is in this place? And I go in, and there's this girl in a brown, like, Ranger Rick outfit. <laughs> and she's sitting at the desk, and she, like, won't even make... You know, I work in the bookstore. It's my job to talk to people and make people happy when I see them. And she's sitting at this desk in this park that nobody comes to. I passed through a trailer park to get here, and it was a sign that was like this big that said, Black Rock Mountain, that way, on cardboard, with, with Sharpie. <laughs> so this girl here, she's working. I know she took this job because it was out in the middle of nowhere, and she probably, she probably volunteers or, or works for like her school or something. And she sits there at the desk for eight hours and gets paid and reads books. And she she was sitting there looking down like this and she was like, hi. Well, she didn't even say hi to me. I said hi to her. I said, hello there. And she was like, hi. And then went back down. Okay, you bobbing for apples over there? Pay attention to me. I'm a, I'm a guest at this park. <laughs> Ramona Flowers. That's what I was thinking of when I saw her. Whatever. I'm going back to nature. I'm here for the adventure, not to talk to myself and then pose as I as if I'm talking to someone, you all. This dope little spider web is awesome. And I just realized I'm getting close to a spider web, which is a home to spiders. <laughs> so so the home builder is probably around here somewhere. I should move on. Oh man, this is awesome. I don't know what it is about going out in a natural place where there aren't any people, but it gives you this, this feeling. On the negative though, the one thing that happens when you go to a place where no people are is that no one else has walked in the places you've walked this morning, so naturally you catch all the spider webs to the face. Any little home builder that was erecting his, his net to catch his, his food throughout the night. He worked for hours on these things and they're all wrapped around my forehead. <sighs> Thanks for nothing, spiders. Now, as you all may know, uh, Georgia is home to many things. It is the home of the Atlanta Braves. It is the home of Ted Turner, who single-handedly made World Championship Wrestling the greatest thing in the 90s. And it's also home to Stone Mountain, Georgia, which is the home of Jake the Snake Roberts, DDT, baby. But then it's also home to views like this. And for that, I am very grateful. There we go. There it is. This is the side of the camera I wanted. Oh, man. And now it's home to me also. You're welcome, Georgia. I seem to have found some trail marks of the elusive Georgia alien 
and he, he seems to be wearing hiking boots. <laughs> I almost busted my butt stepping off the stuff right onto that, that wet, gross, unnatural wood. Speaking of natural or unnatural, I thought you might like to see this. I've seen impressive views since starting this little hike, but this is one of the more, I don't know, what's the word I'm going for here? Uh, something you want to take a bath in? Is there a word for that? Because that's what I want to do. I, I feel, somebody, quick, somebody get me a bar of Irish Spring, now! Please, I'm dirty, toss it to me! Quick, before the water stops flowing. This is apparently Idaho or whatever the place is that I just walked down. This is the falls. Um, now, I'm not sure if you can gauge the scale <laughs> of this uh, due to my camera phone. But, well, there's my hand, and I'm about 10 feet from it. So they're actually more like, it's more like gutter drippings. But still, there's something up there, be it a river that started probably somewhere so far away it might be like miles away and this water found its way to here to fall down these rocks this water is well traveled and it's going to keep going because this is the end of this trail which is supposed to take an hour i think that took me five minutes maybe you're supposed to sit here for 50 and then take it all in but um yeah this is uh this was the end result. The reward, I think, was well worth it. Oh, look. Some idiots. I bet BW really enjoyed the spider webs to the face. Thanks for not getting them all, BW. <laughs> Congo? No? Anyone? All right. I know in my luck, some some travel weary uh, nomad is gonna come down those stairs while I'm over here doing African chants, and and think I'm an, a lunatic that's been hiding out down here and waiting for my next passerby to stab them and eat them. Okay, I'm getting out of here before before there is a lunatic down here that's waiting to eat me as said passerby. Holla! Ooh, people under the stairs. Oh sweet baby Jesus, it's totally that stupid bridge that her bridge. What is this? A bench that I made fun of earlier. I totally forgive you, bench. May I sit on your sweet, sweet, sweet boards? Oh, oh, you're wet. No, my butt is too. Stairs. Why did it have to be stairs? No, I'm just kidding. I'm really good. Um, I'm done with this one now, so it's on to the next trail, and we'll get there in a minute. Okay, so I'm here in the most natural of locations, an amphitheater, and I'm in my most comfortable environment on a stage with a realistic background of sorts. And, uh, um, you know, some stages have markings for the actors to uh, position themselves while on the stage. Well, here we have the bird droppings to identify center stage. Uh, they are provided by our sponsors bird in the nest the bird is currently not in his nest but a uh, bird in the nest is a very successful business in these parts so I assume he will remain and work for a very long time providing the stage with its markers thank you bird in the bird in the bird in the wood whatever whatever your business is called okay so I'm on a new trail according to the map it's called Norma Campbell. Oh, spurs. Oh, crap. All right. Yeah, that's why I was supposed to roll my socks up. <laughs> okay, so I'm on this thing. It's, it's the Norma Campbell Cove Trail. If I can get this out without being stabbed to death in the legs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bleed out right here on my second quarter mile trail. Um, and it's so new, in fact, that it had no signage telling me that it is, in fact, the Norma Campbell Cove Trail. So there is a chance of no of sorts that this might not be any sort of trail at all but like a trough or an irrigation path however I am going to follow it because that's what adventure is following purported irrigation 
flow patterns. So we're going to see what happens. And maybe I'll wind up at a cove that is named after Norma Campbell. From what I hear, Norma Campbell was a world famous innovator of irrigation. <laughs> Whoa, check it out. Okay, cool. Like I was just walking and, you know, just listening to the birds chatter. And then I heard. I believe, if my ears don't deceive me, that's a babbling. And what is the one thing I know of that does the babbling, other than the women lolling, <laughs> is the brooks. And this sounds to me like a babbling brook. Gorgeous. <laughs> Gorgeous. Look at this. You, where's the sound coming from? Oh, I want to walk in there. Does that disrupt... Is that against the rules of nature to walk through a creek? A crick? <laughs> I might mess up everything. A hundred years of ecosystem buildup would be destroyed, but I want to get closer to that to, to satisfy my need for human vacuuming of everything around me. I'm sure it's coming from deep within there. And I don't want to get too close to the edge of this because I'm straddling a pole. <laughs> so I came to this uh, impasse. Um, well, there's a marker here. And uh, there's a log there with a brick in the way, with a big old block from the ground. And then there's a big block here, and it looks like the trail keeps going there, or like people at least fell off there and attempted to keep going. And I'm not sure this satisfies the definition of a cove, based on my extensive cove knowledge from, you know, that one pirate movie with Johnny Depp. So I'm pretty sure this isn't a cove. This can't be the end of the trail. I'm going to press onward, like the brave adventurers in Arthur Conan Doyle's the Lost World, and perhaps I'll find a pterodactyl. Where's my plateau, Summerlee? One of these days I will find you, plateau. And on there will be creatures, nature, thought long forgotten. All right, keep quiet, mates. I heard, shh, I mean, shh, I heard, uh, what sounded like footsteps over in that general direction. Look really closely. I haven't seen anything yet, but maybe if you look really closely, you'll see something that I'm totally oblivious to. But it may have just been heavy raindrops, but it sounded like the footsteps of something. But I don't think it was something that had the intention of killing, because if that were the case, I wouldn't have heard its footsteps. So I need to be very cognizant of things that I can't hear <laughs> that would serve very very useful to my percentage of survival out here in the wilderness let's press on actually I think I gotta go back because I think this is actually the cove <laughs> and it's a dead end sorry fellow travelers I just I just think it's really incredible the amount of of fauna and flora there's the incredible number like when you think about all the species of plants that people have discovered oh crap I'm at the brook again but I almost slipped and fell in the amount of just plants that people have discovered and then it makes you wonder you know just looking at this mass of stuff so many different species that I couldn't even begin to classify it would take me a weeks to go just through this little patch of grass right here I call it grass because that's I'm I'm an idiot and that's the only plant I know that's green um, so it would take me forever to go through this grass and classify it all so does that just and then you see something really like unique like this but then you're like well that's just as unique as anything else but what made me stop was I saw the dead one right here look at this that's a work of art man that's not, but it's not a work, it's just a thing that happened through years of, through millennium of just, oh man, this got me eaten as a plant, oh man, this got me eaten as a plant, let's stop doing that, let's, let's try a new thing, let's start growing a little tippy barb thing at the end so it stabs deer in the face when they try to eat us, and then over time, making all these changes through reproduction and genetic mutations, you came out with this, and, and that, and this. And all these things that coexist in this little area, if it weren't for the right conditions, like this little creek flowing through here, and the right kind of mud, and the stuff in the soil, and the carbon, and the oxygen that they produce to make other things like me, idiots like me that can walk and think and ruin it all in about a day's time, I could pee on this and ruin all this, like, centuries of just 
happenstance that led this whole area to this. And that's, that's so ridiculous. I don't think people take enough time to stop and think about stuff like that. And I didn't for a very large portion of my life. And what good is it to do that? None, really. But it just expands your mind and it makes you think about things in a different way. And if you do that, you, you learn understanding and that helps you grow as a human. So I'm going to grow as a human physically and walk my fat butt back up this, this, uh, this sh shoddy trail. <laughs> and just to reiterate, like I don't want to come across as a preacher out here because I'm not and this is nature. It has nothing to do with church. So I can't be that pastor of nature. I don't want to do that. I just want to share the things that, that this experience opens up for me so it can make you maybe influence you to have some sort of adventure of your own just like this just grab a pack put on some boots and go man and here I am away from the books and the discount cards and the things that I see every day all day okay so I'm almost back to the top of the trail and the water it's not raining anymore but there's so many trees and leaves that you know leaves are designed to catch the water to use it and it's dripping still and the sun's shining through and so there's all this water here and it the vapors can't escape and it's starting to steam and my socks are gonna be a soggy soup sock <laughs> something so I gotta get out of here and I love nature but I also love me a good vending machine hello Powerade I'm on top of the world, eh? I'm on top of the world, eh?